Hey, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. And I'm Mike Russ from Dr. Energy Saver in Cleveland, Ohio. We're here at the Dr. Energy Saver Energy City, we call it. It's our international training center, home energy uh, conservation training center. And uh, we have a display here of a variety of different things. And uh, well, one of the things we're gonna talk about uh, here today is uh, conventional strategies for making a home more comfortable and energy efficient. And the mm -hmm. attic is our A priority. That's correct. Attic is our A priority. Basement would be our second priority and the spaces in between would be the third priority. All right, A, B, C, attic, number one, basement, and then condition space. And here we have some insulation. What kind of insulation is this, Mike? That's fiberglass insulation. Mm -hmm. And we generally can use fiberglass insulation or we can use cellulose insulation, either one. Generally, we like to use cellulose insulation because it has higher R value. You know, before we put insulation uh, in an attic, uh, of course, everybody kind of understands and make their house more comfortable. They're going to need more insulation than what they have. But uh, there's uh, some pretty important things that someone would have to do before they go in and start blowing in insulation in an attic. That's correct. There's a lot of spaces underneath that insulation before that insulation was blown in there that leak air. So all that warm air that was heated up by the furnace in the, in the, uh, in the winter or the cool air that uh, was brought in uh, by the air conditioner in the summer, all that air sits underneath the attic. So because there are leaks or, or places uh, where air can leak, that air can leak right up through. And unfortunately, it'll leak right through the insulation. Uh -huh. So that all has to be sealed before you can put this insulation down. Well, I think it's pretty easy for anybody to understand that whether we have blown in fiberglass insulation or fiberglass bats like down there, which, you know, would be existing in someone's attic, that this is pretty porous. In fact, your furnace filter is made out of fiberglass, so That's air correct. goes right through it. That's right. Air will come right through it unless it's sealed first. That will make the uh, R value or the value of having the insulation put in uh, way more effective than it would be otherwise. You know, um, if someone was to put insulation in their attic without air sealing, then that would be, uh, that would be a, a problem because the air would leak right up through the insulation. And That's now, correct. In order to fix it, the leaks are even harder to get to. You've got to get through all this blown in insulation and through the bats that were underneath there uh, to get to the air leaks. It would almost be impossible to do uh, if you tried to do it afterwards. Yeah, so as professionals, we would never insulate an attic without no. air sealing first. That's correct. Yeah, you know, um, insulating, believe it or not, um, you know, visually when you look in an attic from before an attic has blown an insulation to after, visually looks like, wow, they did a lot of work, right? That's correct. But really, the insulation is the easy part. We go in with a hose, there's a blowing machine, and you kind of wave the hose around like this, for about uh, 45 minutes or so, and bam, the whole attic is insulated, and that's really the easy part, isn't it? That's correct, yes, yes. The air sealing is really the more difficult part yeah. because you really gotta get in there and you gotta move all of this existing bat insulation out of the way. So you literally have to take it and move it all out of the way. Then you gotta get in there with a different, a variety of different spray foam guns and, uh, and, and seal all those areas up. Um, there's there's uh, sometimes can lights in there. Yeah. So we have we have these uh, these uh, special boxes mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that are constructed specifically for can lights that fit over the top of that. And of course those are all uh, foamed and, and and caulked and sealed as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got to put a basically an airtight hat over the top of a can light fixture every single one. And some of these new that's correct homes could have dozens of. Uh, can lights in the second floor ceiling. And wires are coming through everywhere. Yeah. And plumbing uh, is coming through in a lot of different places, exhaust fans, all of those things will leak. So if you don't get in there and get them all sealed, you're, you're still gonna have that air rising up through the insulation. So the plumber wants to put a two inch pipe, he drills a, a three inch hole. That's right. The electrician wants to put in a, a wire this big, he drills a hole this big. And we have all these holes in the top of the wall assemblies and and uh, all over the place, a joint between the drywall and the top of a wall leaks air. That's right. And what a lot of people don't realize is that um, interior walls, like separating bedrooms, those are hollow. Mm -hmm. So you have your electrical outlets there and uh, the top plates on those walls will leak at the attic level. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of air that is being drawn through the outlets, through the center of those walls and then into the attic and then lost to the, uh, to the outside. Then we have some really big leaks like around chimneys. Uh, the building code says that you have to keep all the, 
combustible materials, all the wood framing of the house away from the chimney by a couple inches and that leaves a big opening all the way around a chimney, all the way to the basement where That's lots correct. of air leaks out. Yeah, there are other forms of chases like that as well, where a builder may decide to run everything up one main square area that's through the entire house from the basement all the way up. So they'll bring all the electric and all the plumbing and everything through that one area um, and just leave it all exposed. Yeah. So and all ducks. that air just leaks its way out. Uh huh. So what about ducks in an attic? Really two things. Ducks that are, uh, you know, they're, they're bringing heat, you know, into that attic. They have heat running through them or cool air. And um, so let's say you're bringing heat in and it's the middle of winter and that attic could be, you know, zero degrees. So you got this warm air running through these ducts and you're losing all of that warm air to that cold environment or the reverse in the summer where you're losing all that cool air to the warm environment. So the first thing we have to do with the ducts is we have to seal them. Just like we had to seal this here, we have to seal all the areas on the ducts that could leak air into that environment. Mm -hmm. And then once, the, uh, once those leaks are sealed, then we need to insulate those ducts so that we don't lose that air. So you can actually lose heat um, in a couple of ways, either conductively through the metal or um, uh, uh, convectively, which means that air is just leaking out the joints. Mm -hmm. Very important to take care of ducks in an attic. And, and so there's lots of things that we have to do before we just blow in, whether it be fiberglass or our preferences, cellulose insulation, um, in order to get the job done right. That's right. We also have to do something else here, which is what these baffles are for. Uh -huh. uh, those baffles are put in here. so that the, the uh, uh, insulation that you blow in does not clog up the soffit vents. See, right. there's vents back there. Uh -huh. And those vents let in cool air to keep the underside of the roof cool in the winter. Um, and then that air is vented out through the top of the roof. But the reason that we need the underside of this cool is so that we don't warm the roof up and create ice dams. Because what will happen is when the snow comes on the roof, a layer of that snow will melt and start to run off the roof. And that's where you see all those big icicles. Uh -huh. So we put these uh, uh, baffles in in order to keep that airflow going. Uh, and so that they're not clogged by all this insulation. Right, so it's not as easy as just going up there and blowing in insulation. There's things that have to be done beforehand. Now, how does uh, a homeowner in Cleveland, Ohio get the right advice? Uh, very simple, all they have to do is either contact us uh, at 888-590-3637 uh, or go to our website at drenergysavercleveland.com. Excellent, thanks Mike. You're welcome.